Hi, I'm Zoe Prince. I'm a coxswain for our IT crew. I'm a third year graphic design major from Chicago, Illinois, and I've been coxing for eight years. My name is Farron Wilson. I am on the RIT crew team. I'm a third year major in supply chain management. I've been blowing for three years and I'm here with Jordan to talk about the relationship between coxing and deaf and hard of hearing rollers. So at Rochester Institute of Technology, there are nine colleges, but one college is named the National Institute for the Deaf. So there's around 10% of the student population is deaf and hard of hearing. And in the classrooms, you would always see interpreters or captionists that are there for the deaf and hard of hearing students. I actually didn't start joining the crew team till my third year of college. I realized I really wanted to get back into sports because I missed it so much. You know, the first semester rowing on, on the novice team, I just fell in love with the sport and it just became who I am. The rowers are just focused on rowing and that is their job. I'm basically their eyes and ears of everything else. They don't know what's going on, on outside of the boat, so it's my responsibility as a coxswain to tell them all that information. What exactly we're doing, where we are in a race course, what the other boats are doing on a race course, and all of that. So my job is to talk to the rowers. Um, and that's kind of hard when you can't really hear. So when I have my CIs on, you can see that I am vocal and I'm able to hear. She wore her CI for yes. most of now this year up until Cocoa, Cocoa Beach. When we started doing starts, then it started getting wet and we didn't want to risk anything, so she took it off. When I had my CIs off, like, like the first time on the boat, it was definitely difficult knowing what we had to do. And so like in order to go through that, Zoe and I had like kind of teach ourselves what, to, what will help me and what communication wise. So we came up with hand signals, paddling, um, let's see, power 10, uh, rain off. Oh yeah, we do like rain off. A lot of it's also mimicking the blades. Like if we're on the square now, like it's a square blade. And then like into, we're gonna add the feather one, two, and we'll add the feather. Or if I want her to like lengthen our catch, I started doing like an L and just like long, long. Or like yeah. sometimes if you were like going too deep with your blade, I would like try and show that you're going too deep. Um, or like if you were skying your blade, like I just like stick my hand up like that mm -hmm. and you would figure that out. And also we have signs for what type of starts that we're gonna be doing. So yeah, so it'll be like first five, or if we do like first five, high 10, or like half pressure, half speed, or like full pressure, full speed. Yeah, already, that's a big one, because uh, obviously I'm not, I'm though here, so I would always have to look at the cocks and see when are we starting, so ready, ready, okay. It's dependent on each individual rower and what works for them, but like what works best for you is only telling you when you are doing something. A big thing that we did also, especially when starting out, was just into, like one, two. So she knows like, okay, into stroke, something is changing. Yes. I don't know what, but something is changing. So like, be ready for that change. It definitely took an adjustment. Like there are, even today, there's like still some times I'm like, oh, forgot to sign that. Oh, forgot I have to sign that. <laughs> no one else had done this, uh, having a deaf floor on the crew team. So it was a really good learning experience uh, with the both of us. It just allows us to be more adaptable. The hand signals will let you be in any seat, any boat, any time. I depend a lot on the person in front of me to follow along because that's like, that's where I'm facing. I also started having my interpreter on the launch with coach so whenever we stop, like I can listen to the interpreter and what the coach is saying. My name is Jessica Ziomek. I'm a sign language interpreter. And Jessica, she's been interpreting for me for almost three years now, I believe. The eights are like here, and then the coach is driving what's called the launch, like a smaller boat. And I like sit with the coach on that one. So I'm kind of wherever the coach sets up. So one of the big things, especially at the beginning, was like negotiating it with the coach of like, hey, don't forget, I have to be seen. The signing when we're on land is definitely different than the signing on water. On water, Fern and I kind of agree on more of like signals of like what the drill will, will be. So like pyramid, 
Vern knows like what that drill is, whereas anywhere else I wouldn't sign pyramid for pyramid, but it's because of how the drill is structured of like that up and then down. Starboard is an S port, but that's just like, that's not the sign for them. But we've kind of like figured out if I sign this, will you understand what I mean or not? Considering that I've only learned sign language like when I, when I started at RIT four years ago, so I don't know all the signs, I'm not completely fluent. And so Jessica has found a way for her signing for me to receive it like easier. A lot of it also is remembering what to remind the coach to go over, and especially with Fern, because she prefers to have her cochlear implant on and to listen to what's being said directly from the coach or whoever she's talking to. So one of the things that's different in interpreting is I'm often thinking like, what was the feedback that coach had on the water and making sure like, hey, we're back on land. Fern has her cochlear on. Don't forget you wanted to go over these. Our relationship is closer than it would be with any deaf person in a different environment. It kind of has to be too, because if it's pouring I mean, out and I need to take off my jacket after, I'm, I'm doing it. Mm -hmm. if, we're, if it's freezing out, we're both there. I think the biggest thing is that it's possible and like, don't let it scare you. Because I know at first we were all like, okay, new challenge. Like, we can do this, but we don't know how. And there are no resources. Hopefully this helps and that we kind of create that resource, but it's possible. Like, do not let it scare you at all. Every deaf person is different and every deaf person has different communication preferences. And as a team, you have to match that preference. And the important part is just to like work with the person and figure out what they want. Just listen to the deaf or hard of hearing people and what helps them keep trying things and keep trying like options. If it doesn't work out, it doesn't work out. Just try to emphasize that and do, do something different and see what works. I wanna feel like I'm doing really well right now on this sport, on this team. I think like one challenge was just making sure I get my technique right. It feels easy to be on this team because the girls are so supportive. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I want to say her challenge is just the same as any other rower here in right. Utah. Like, just row well. Like, my challenge is, not, the challenge is, like, it's not that I am deaf. 